In this era of AI, the biggest challenge for researcher is that you need a different tool for every single task. One tool to search paper, another to summarize, and a different one to write articles, and maybe even something else just for reference management. And switching between multiple tools is not at all practical. And in the end, you also end up paying more by subscribing to so many different platforms. So I was looking for a single AI tool that could do it all, right from generating ideas to write the final paper so that I can minimize my efforts, save time, and of course, save money as well. A few days back, I came across Gatsby, an AI research assistant that promises to fulfill almost all my research needs. Now, of course, this sounds too good to be true, but we are here to test if this tool is really capable of writing an entire research article. It also has other features like suggesting novel ideas, writing literature reviews, meta-analysis, and even patents. So I want you to hold on until the end, as we will find out whether Gatsby can actually deliver what it promises. Now let's check out this tool. This is the official page of Gatsby, the next-gen AI research agent. Unlike most AI tools that can only be used on the web, Gatsby also gives you the option to download it to your desktop, and it supports both Windows and Mac OS. That means you get better privacy and more control over your queries, data, drafts, and history. I have already downloaded the Gatsby app on my Windows system and signed in to my account. The tool still requires an internet connection for logging in, assessing AI features, and searching the web. You will see the core features listed on the left. Gatsby Innovator for generating research ideas, Gatsby Writer for drafting research papers and patent disclosures, and Gatsby Reviewer for systematic review and meta-analysis. Now let's see this tool in action. Starting with its most powerful feature, the Gatsby Writer. As an input, you simply provide your topic and your research methodology. I am uploading the method section from one of my research paper draft as a separate document. I have also added some figures to get better results. This is essential for generating a full paper. Currently, the tool supports only the doc format with a maximum file size of 5 MB. Personally, I feel this limit should be a bit higher, especially if you want to include more information like tables and images. Before generating the manuscript, it first gives you a summary of your research so you can check if it's going in the right direction. At the bottom, there are options to specify whether it's a research paper or a patent and even set the expected manuscript length since some journals prefer shorter papers. For now, I will keep the default setting and click on write manuscript. The writing process can take several minutes, but honestly, that's still nothing compared to the weeks I would normally spend in writing. To save time, here I will directly show you the results. Let's check out the generated output. Here's the title it has refined, and honestly, it looks good, clear, specific, and suitable for this study we performed. Next is the abstract, which includes a well-defined background, the methods we provided, and even the outcomes. Since we didn't actually include the results section in our input, so you won't be able to see specific number or gene names here, but at least it guides you on what to write in the abstract, which saves a lot of your effort. After that comes the introduction. Now keep in mind, I didn't provide the tool with an abstract, an introduction, or the results in the input. Still, it managed to draft a complete introduction covering the background of the bamboo species, growth mechanism, past studies, the existing gaps, and why transcriptional profiling is important. I was actually surprised at how structured and logical it sounded. What I find really important here is that the tool adds the in-text citation to every citation-worthy statement. And this is critical because citing the right papers improves the credibility of your research and also helps avoid plagiarism issues. If you are interested in this topic, I already have a detailed video on plagiarism that you should definitely check out. At the end of the manuscript, it gives you a complete list of references that were cited in the text. The formatting was neat and journal ready, which saves a lot of time compared to doing it manually. You can of course use free tools like Zotero to further manage and format them according to the different journal styles. Still, I always recommend verifying each citation yourself because sometimes there are chances of mismatched or incorrect references. However, when I went through this list, I found all the references were relevant and well matched to this study. When you click on an individual reference, it actually redirects you to the original source. From there, you can read or download the full paper or even use it for building and managing your own library. Another thing I noticed is that the tool also adds equation to the paper. For example, it includes a formula for calculating sequence identity, RPCAM values, and others. 
In this draft alone, it generated around 23 equations. Now, depending upon your study, many of these may or may not be relevant. So you can choose from them. After the introduction, you will find the methodology properly structured into subsections, which is exactly how methods are usually presented. Nonetheless, you can always add in more details if needed. Then comes the results. You can see the results are only briefly mentioned because I didn't provide actual result data in my input. Instead, the tool relied on the methods and figures I uploaded to draft a general outline of what the result should look like. And honestly, that's pretty impressive. I tested it with minimal input just to see how well the tool performs. And I must say it did a great job. But if you provide more detailed result as input, I'm sure the generated draft would be even stronger. I also noticed that it skipped a few figures which the developers should work upon. But anyway, figures are something you would usually attach separately during submission. So that's not really a big issue. One thing to keep in mind is that it doesn't process raw data. You will need to provide your data in the final process form like a table or a figure. And if you are looking for actual data analysis, this isn't the right tool. I have shared another tool for that in the description if you are interested. Just like results, the discussion section also depends heavily on the data you provide. The more details you give, the better the discussion it will generate. The conclusion section on the other hand was quite well written. Again with the access to more of your actual data, it could have drafted a more precise and relevant conclusion. One limitation I found is that you cannot make changes to the paper directly within the platform. To do that, you will have to export it as an MS Word file, LaTeX or zip folder. Overall, the Gatsby Writer feels amazing. It structures the full manuscript from your methods and minimal information just with a few clicks, saving weeks of your work. And if you are not happy with the draft, you can simply regenerate the manuscript. And since the paper is written by AI, you might worry about AI detection. For that, Gatsby also offers a humanized option, though it costs you some credits. Personally, I prefer rewriting parts by myself. But overall, the writer is excellent for creating a reference draft. Now let's move on to the next feature, Gatsby Reviewer. I will use it to create a systematic literature review on topic effect of mindfulness on cellular aging. It first generates an outline covering the background, objectives, methodology for literature search and data extraction, results and conclusion. You can regenerate this or add instruction to refine it further. At the bottom, it lists the papers it has referred to. But note, it only analyzes papers with full access. If you want to include specific studies, you can upload those full text yourself. Once the manuscript is generated, you can view it. Just like a research paper, the literature review comes with proper academic language, citations, and well-defined sections. The abstract briefly explains mindfulness, mechanism of cellular aging, known findings, gaps, methodology for this review, and future directions. The introduction is detailed with proper citations and a complete reference list at the end. In methodology, it says the review follows Prisma guidelines to ensure rigor and transparency. It searched across five major databases, listing keywords, research questions, and inclusion and exclusion criteria. This flowchart summarizes the screening process. 491 papers identified, but only five retained. Don't know why? Honestly, that number feels too small, and it should be optimized for more exhaustive literature review. It also generates tables, for example, summarizing the role of telomerase in aging. Now, these may not look perfect, but they give you a clear idea of what kind of tables you can include. After this, you get the discussion and conclusion section as well. So just by providing a topic, you can get a well-formatted literature review. For beginners, this is really helpful since many don't know how to search and structure reviews. But again, I don't recommend blindly submitting it. Use it as a reference to speed up your writing. And remember, results also depend on the full text papers the tool has access to. If a paper is really important, try to get it full version and upload it. In my another video, I have shared several legit ways to access paid articles for free. Now coming on to the last feature, generating research ideas based on existing gaps and challenges in a particular subject topic. Based on your profile history or selected research interest, Gatsby suggests topics. You can also type your own topic. For example, I have chosen epigenetic modifications influencing rapid growth in bamboo species. Let's see what it comes up with. It starts by understanding the keywords. For instance, epigenetic means heritable changes in gene expression without altering the DNA sequence. 
It identifies mechanisms like DNA methylation, histone modifications, and non-coding RNA pathways affecting the bamboo growth. And if needed, you can give additional instructions to refine the analysis. Next, you see a component-wise breakdown, biological process involved, role of enzymes, functional effects of each modification, and how these changes influences gene expression. This builds a basic understanding of the topic, followed by highlighting key problems and challenges. Then it lists specific research topics you can pursue. Each comes with a short explanation of why it's relevant, existing bottlenecks, and possible methodologies. You will also see a rating system. More star means stronger topics. But I would still recommend to verify them before moving forward. At the bottom, it also provides reference papers for further reading. If you find a topic interesting, you can click expand for more details, objectives, methods, and approaches you could follow. Technically, you could generate a whole manuscript based on this, but the smarter way is to first verify the novelty of the topic, refine the analysis, and then use writing feature to create a draft. And of course, always cross-check the citations, the results, and the inferences drawn. Use AI-generated content ethically only for assistance, and rely more on your creative thinking and analysis. Overall, I found the tool quite impressive. You will find a free demo to get better idea about this tool. And if you upgrade to a pro plan, you will get unlimited generations of ideas, research paper, and reviews. As a bonus, I will also share the best bang link and special discount code in the pinned comment. Also check out my full AI series to boost your academic productivity. And if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe and consider joining my channel membership for extra perks. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.